I'm Hannah and welcome to my very first episode of Green Planet Kids. I guess before we start I'd better explain to you guys a bit about what Green Planet Kids actually is. Well, it's my new series and it's full of creative, imaginative, fun videos that dive into how we can look after our planet and all the amazing wildlife within it. Join me and the rest of the GPK team to learn how, together, we can actually make a difference. Humans create a lot of waste. Think about all those plastic water bottles that you've ever drunk out of, and those plastic bags that you get from every shopping trip. Where do these actually go? Well, they end up in our oceans and can really harm and destroy the animals that are living in there. But that's where we step in. We are going to turn all of this waste into art. Today we are going to take your average tin can and turn it into a lantern. Now I know this doesn't look like much right now but bear with me. First we're going to need a tin can. Now this can be any tin can, the one that you use to keep your sweet corn in that you had for lunch the other day or the one from the soup that you slurped up earlier. I have chosen three baked bean cans and peel the labels off to reveal the metal underneath. You may need to give them a bit of a wash as sometimes it can be a little bit sticky. Secondly, you'll need some scissors, some tape, a pen and some paper to draw your design onto. You will also need some nails, large and small ones like this, and a hammer which we will use to make the holes in the can. And then lastly, some ribbon or some string to tie at the top of our lovely lanterns. So to kick off our lantern making session, we're going to get our tin can and we're going to get a piece of paper like this. And we're going to wrap the paper do this, around the can like so. We're then going to get our scissors and cut the piece of paper to roughly the same size as the can. Really do not worry about this being neat because it does not matter. So once you've done that, I'm going to peel the paper off and simply cut up. So we've got this nice square bit of paper that fits around, oh, fits around our can like this. Now once you've cut out your piece of paper, you can begin drawing. Now this can be any pattern that you want to go onto your can. I would say keep it simple and also make sure that you add the holes onto your drawing to show where you're going to bang the nails in. So I'm going to draw my pattern and I think, I think I'm going to do a swirl. So I'm going to start by simply drawing the outline to my swirl, like this. And then I'm going to draw in the points for the nails to go in. This is just a bit of a guide for you so that when we stick it on the tin, it's nice and easy. And there doesn't need to be any accuracy to these dots. You can put them wherever you like. You can have as little or as many. There we go. So I finished my dots as you can see. So once we've got our design, we are then going to get our tin can back and stick it onto the front like so. I'm going to use a little bit of tape just to keep it in place. So wrap it around the top and then the bottom. And then once we've done this, we are going to get our hammer and nails and begin our DIY. Just make sure that when you do the hammering, that you have an adult around as sometimes it can get a little bit hairy. So my pattern is stuck onto my can like so and now it's time for the hammering. So before I do that I have got um, these two blocks of wood which I am going to slide into my can like so. You can use any blocks of wood at all, or if it's easy, you can use a tea towel. But what this does is basically keep the shape of the can um, for when we're hammering in to make sure that it doesn't bend and also help as protection from the nails. So I'm going to get my nail, here it is, and I am going to place it on one of the first points that I've drawn and I'm simply going to start hammering. Now always make sure that you have someone with you as well. 
And you are going to have to apply a bit of pressure to this for it to go through the tin can. So don't worry if it doesn't happen immediately. And what you're going to do, what you're going to do is work your way through all the points on your can. And as I said, just make sure that it goes through to the back of the can, that the nail has fully gone through the can so that the light from your lanterns will be able to shine through. There we go, first hole done. Quite a few more to go. So once you've finished hammering all your holes into the tin, you can peel off the paper, like so, and see your creation come to life. So I did actually put some holes, there you go, in the side of my can using the drill, um, just because it gives it a bit of a bigger hole, because I'm gonna thread my ribbon through the top so that if I want to, I can hang it onto things. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna get my ribbon and I'm gonna thread it through. Now you can use ribbon, you can use string, anything you want to. Um, I just found this in my house and thought it would look quite nice and pretty through it. Um, so I'm gonna thread my ribbon through. Now because of the hole, because the hole is quite small, I'm gonna use my nail that I use to hammer in the holes to just poke it through. Oh, not very well, apparently. <laughs> so just keep on poking, gently teasing the ribbon through the hole. And eventually, it will sneak through. And you'll be able to pull it out. Oh, the other side. So once you thread it through, you will get a nice loop like this for your lantern. I've got quite a lot of leftover ribbon here, so what I'm going to do is cut um, the insides of it off, just because we don't want them getting in the way when you put a candle in there. So once you've cut them off, I would then advise either sticking them down with a bit of sellotape or doing a tiny knot. And voila, we have ourselves a beautifully decorated lantern. Now it may not look like much at the moment, but just you wait until it gets dark. Find yourself some tea lights and place them in your lanterns for when it gets dark. Light them up and see your creations come to life. I really hope you guys have enjoyed my very first Green Planet Kids vlog and just make sure that you hit the subscribe button and join the GPK team. I'll see you very soon for my next vlog.